Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Denmark. Uh, and today we were uh, in our short talk, we were gonna talk about, I, I was reading this book that um, Ryan Wells suggested, it's uh, called The E-Myth, um, and it has some really interesting stuff in it. One of it's talking about systems. And now I'm paraphrasing because I rewrote the quote of it, but I really like this quote. It was, uh, put systems in place that will allow ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And, and to me, it, it, they talk some in this book about systems and how important systems are. And um, I, I think for me in scripting, I wish that they actually focused more in the book on it because it really started me thinking about how important, you know, we all have quote unquote systems and, and whether they're documented and clear or people just say, you go do this and it's in our head, but we don't really follow it. It's not necessarily clear. Um, and and I, I think it was a really good point of the, the more specific instructions we give people and have documentation around it and clear procedures. Um, one is it's easier for that employee. You can, you can actually, you know, usually hire people that aren't as, I'm not going to say smart's not the right word for it, but they don't have to be as well educated and knowledgeable because you've given them the pattern of this is what you do. Um, but the thing I like about it with scripting is it then helps you, the more of it that's documented, the easier it is for me to come in and, and start writing a script to figure out what to automate in that process of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, and to, to me, it's, it's about the same. I, I have a really hard time finding like a, a real world example that, that is easily accessible and saying, oh, here they implemented a system that, that made ordinary people able to do extraordinary things. But again, with looking at everyday stuff, making open source software available or a hotkey for that matter, um, just having a company where that would be allowed to run might be one way of putting maybe not, it's hard to call oneself ordinary, but of course we're all sure, yeah. mostly ordinary. Um, but it is what it is. And someone who didn't have the knowledge before, but again, is Arahatki then a script or is VBA in Excel or where, where are we at with the systems, right? But yeah, and I think let's, let, let me, let me, give you an example from the book. They, they leverage McDonald's as a, as a great one that mm -hmm. creates these amazing systems. And it's one of the things that allows them to, you know, create a hamburger and have it fresh and ready in 30 seconds, right? And they, they have all these very clear procedures of what has to happen and when. And then also by doing these very, very, and they, they send off the, the people to McDonald's, I forget what it's called. Um, I can't remember, there's a college, McDonald's college. I forget what it's actually, mm -hmm. it's something close to that. And, uh, and they train them on all the minutiae, the stuff. Um, that's more for the managers, but the employees, they get trained very specifically of, of you know, if you see this, you do this. If you see this, you do this. And I, and I think part of that point is they, of course, don't, they're not hiring a near, nor can they hire expensive people for doing that stuff, right? And if they were trying to hire someone they didn't have these systems, they'd have to hire almost like a chef level person that understands every little thing and, and when exactly you do stuff and how to do it. But by creating clearly documenting of this happens for this long and then you turn it at this time and it should be this thick and um, it should only be on the, the warmer for 20 minutes max. And then it, if not, it, you know, you take it off or give it away, whatever. All these rules um, allow them to have a billion dollar, you know, multi-billion dollar company because the consistency is what customers you know want and, and it was a good point i thought they made don't confuse low price with low quality right they they deliver on their promise you know a, usually a clean restaurant food that won't kill you, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. It's not the most amazing but it's really really consistent i i <laughs> I, I like the one food that won't kill you um uh, I'm not not getting into how healthy the stuff is and stuff like that. And I, I have an urban myth of people saving a cheeseburger in their car for or a hamburger or whatever for who knows how long, and it's yeah. still being edible. And and 
I people were like, that's because it's not food, and I was like, mm, no, maybe it's because it was actually clean, so you didn't well, have bacteria in it uh, I was, beforehand. I was going to make fun of you being in Denmark and say, well, you're in Denmark, and it's actually a freezer if your car is sitting outside. So. <laughs> I actually had a hard time getting into my car this morning because it was frozen stuck. Oh, but, yeah. I, I don't miss those days. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And, and it's probably also one of the things that works for like China, so to speak, or, or lean mm. for that matter of, or, um, conveyable ma assembly. Right. Exactly. Um, yes. Uh, all, all of those. Break it down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where, so tying it back into the scripting side of things, right? That's where, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if someone said, hey, can, Jackie, we'd like you to go visit X person's team, and we think they have some sort of a process there that could be automated, can you go look at it? And if you went in there, and, and you know, if, if here are the two things that might happen. You talk to an employee there, and you're like, so, so what do you do? And they're like, well, I just field the responses. And that's really all the information they can give you, right? And they're like, well, how do you do it? And you have to keep asking question after question after question, right? That's option A. Option B is they're like, well, here is my manual that tells me if this comes in and this is this way, I do this behavior. And if it's this way, I do that behavior. And they have all this documented and clearly do, you know, which of those two are going to be easier for you to start to, first, just to answer them if you can automate it or not, but second, yeah. to actually create a script. Yeah. Yeah, and, and exactly did, as you said yourself, if you're able to put it into uh, almost any type of system, not, not a digital system per se, but just have it systemized, it, it might be easier to pinpoint where whatever issue might be or whatever point could be automated. Or as, as we talked about a few times over is that people believe that whatever they're doing can't be automated. But we talked in, a, in another podcast about if you make the thing that's automated small enough, if, yep. if you make the, 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 the smallest thing like, oh, and then I click the mouse, see that can be automated, okay. But I actually do think where I'm putting it Okay, so how do you decide where to put it? Oh, but I think about that and then I have that thing over there that I keep in memory. Okay, okay. So you're, you still have information in two places. If we yeah. take that, can we then know where to put it? Okay, maybe. So yeah, every time you go over those things and you cut it down into small enough pieces and make it systematic, yeah. mm. Yeah. Um, then, then sure. It, it, it's a, to me, it's also most of the world can probably be put into some kind of systemized thing. Um, but if you then implement something on top of that, that makes it easier for other people to see, mm -hmm. then absolutely. It, yeah. it, it, let me, let me add on to what you just described because I love it. In the example you gave, I would say also, well, when you're when you're putting on your thinking cap and deciding what to do with this, what if we actually provided you some information right there handy to help you aid you, right, and make it yeah. easy you select and choose, right? Because it'd be like this is you know wow that could help. Um, and I had a really brilliant second point. <laughs> oh, that's what <laughs> I got it now. Um, was the other one that 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 I never thought of. I think I was talking to Tank or maybe it was you, but one time but we were talking about stuff and say look. People say, well, what I do can't be automated. And you can say, you know what? Often, you don't have to automate every event that comes in, right? Every, let's say you're, you're doing phone calls and you don't have to automate every one that comes in. But what if you can get rid of like 30%? Because when these 30% come in and it says this, I know this is exactly what I do every time. And you just remove that entirely. And so now I can focus more on the other stuff that still needs a human to make decisions on, right? So... It's something I think people don't really consider when they say, my, my job can't be automated because it's, it's too uncertain. There's uncertainty. Well, there's not uncertainty in every case, right? And it's, it's an important distinction to help them realize. 
I think that when something like um, self-driving cars become a reality, and they're all, they're almost there, but when they become part of our everyday lives, a lot of people will need to rethink the idea of a task not being automatable. A lot of people are still like, mm, they'll never, it, it'll never work. They'll, it won't happen. People won't adopt to it. People will still want to drive cars themselves and all of that stuff. And I'm, every time I talk about uh, self-driving cars, I have colleagues who says, well, it will be so nice to not having to drive. Then I can work on my way to work. And I'm like, yeah, but if we really look at it, my digital workplaces not be a thing almost at the same time. Right. Yeah, maybe so maybe you don't even need to go to work but right. yeah um, but the, the idea of cutting it down making driving into something that you can put a system around and and if if people go and look at some of these videos that's been uploaded of a car yep. uh, telling every showing what it's seeing and it's just everything being put into a system and let me make sure i i think i now understand why you, i think it was a good point but now i get why you're saying it because a car being driven is there's so many things that need to be taken into account to to be able to do that and yet someone that does a very mundane thing is saying well mine thing's too complicated <laughs> it, it, it can't be automated and you know and it's like Look at look at what they're doing with yeah self driving cars right trust me it it can be automated um, yeah yeah exactly it's yeah. it's not magic oh yeah. a, a computer can't see what I'm seeing mm, yeah yeah it can see what you see oh but it 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 can't determine what stuff is oh but it can actually classify what things yeah, is. yeah but it it can't it can't in three D and what's the way it can do that as well. And so each time you give it an extra sensor or an extra you know, way of, so people sitting there and thinking, oh, I get these emails from these angry customers and I need to decide how to answer it or who to send it to or what. And it, it's, it's pretty definable. You, you could probably interview a person who did that for a day or a week or whatever you do and have it narrowed down to maybe 80% of what they do is systemizable, something that you could put a system around. Yep. And, and that's not the same as saying that people ain't useful because we, we, we are still able to think out of side of the box quite well yep. uh, as compared to a computer, but each time we don't. And I, I heard it in a TED talk recently that yep. um, for the last few, uh, I don't know, uh, a decade is that 10 years? Yes. Is that more? Yep. Yeah. Uh, for, for at least some decades, we, we have been trying to make people more efficient, more robotic, more um, productive and um, whereas that's maybe not our force maybe maybe that's not what we should be doing with our time right um because our we, strength. yeah yeah exactly okay so you have a repetitive task for some reason your elbow is no longer working because you for 50 years you sat there in, or 10 or whatever Maybe that's because that's not what you're meant to do. It's just, there's a robotic arm over there. It can do it for a hundred years, as long as you just give it some oil. Then that can be your task, <laughs> right. uh, give it oil yeah. or whatever, um, until we figure out something smarter for you to do. But yeah, it's, it's just, uh, we, we as, humans should probably be analyzing the tasks instead and helping to use the tools that we have available to automate them instead of saying, my task can't be automated. Right. You know, and, and actually I love the example you just gave me with the, uh, the oil and the, the machine, right? Because 
if you go right back into our original statement, right, put systems in place that allow ordinary people to do extraordinary things, right? Suddenly, you had a human that might do that and might mess up, might not go fast enough, may not be able to make it folded well enough, right? Yet, you suddenly, you put in a robot that can do it more precisely, faster, and yet you still have a human helping it, right? I, mm. I think that's, that's the heart of kind of where we're going, right, is is you find a way to systematize it and, and nail it down. Um, and that way, that person doesn't have to be an expert person, right? They, they're they not doing that repetitive stuff. And yeah, I think it's a really good point. Yeah, and, and I know as 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 humans, we're, we're probably inclined to try and, and do the least um, needed to, to get what's needed. It comes from being life, it, 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 that's the reason stuff evolves because hey it was easier to have a wing when I needed to get from one branch to another and stuff so it, it just happens that's that's what what we do and why are we doing all of this stuff that we now have tools that can help us do right. and free up our uh, mind for doing other stuff I I, I know from from reading that the, the capacity of the human brain, our ability to think and analyze and all of that has been about the same for 300,000 years. The only real difference is that now we're actually neutralized. Uh, I don't know if that was pronounced correctly, but now we actually are fed easily. Now we actually have free time. Yeah. Now we actually have education in place. Now we actually have all of these things that have removed something from our, um, <laughs> we don't need to every think about, oh, am I going to survive the night? Or am I going to survive the winter? Or um, is my family safe? So because we don't need to use brain power on those things, um, uh, we, we are now able to think about other things. and. I read a study at one point where they had actually figured out that people who were um, worrying about their daily economics, will I have food on my table for my kids or whatever, actually scored less on um, brain intensive uh, tests, sure. and yeah, IQ yeah, tests and other yeah. stuff like that. Sure. And if you removed that need for the brain to constantly remember, oh, you know, or constantly use whatever, your scores went up. And so, so it is per scientific fact that it apparently we use brain power on all those things that we worry about so yeah yeah i'm pretty sure that whatever uh, big science is thinking about now also comes from all of the other things that we have in society right it's systems in general is like i i had a talk with my daughter at one point and my son was sitting there next to her on the back seat and he's screaming Dad, Dad, you drove over a red light. I was like, no, I didn't. I, I was blinking to the left and I was waiting for the cars to clear the intersection, right? Yeah. And he just looked out the window and he saw a red light and apparently I crossed the red light to him and it was like, okay, so it got me thinking about traffic in general and driving and it's like, the only reason that really works is because we have a system that we have all taught each other the same thing or else driving would be cares. Let, yeah. let me actually follow up on that because I have a great example of it. Um, uh, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine from grad school, he was from China and he's like, hey, would you teach me how to drive? And I've, I, I had actually at that point, I taught pe several people how to drive. So I said, sure. So we get out. And I, we started in a parking lot. And I, anyway, from talking to him, I realized in China, he had almost never been in a car, right? He had he'd taken buses and a bicycle, but he was never like paying attention to rules of the road. He didn't grow up like we in the States grow up seeing it every second, like your son mentioning light, like that was totally foreign to him. 
So we spent two weeks in a parking lot just mm. learning the bare basic things because those weren't norms to him. Those weren't rules that he understood. You know, yeah. so it took a lot longer. And I didn't mind, but it was just one of those things like, wow, okay, we, you know, we, we got a lot of explaining. And, and it was actually interesting. It's a, you know, so actually we should have that as another talk is a, I had to think about why I do what I do and explain it to him of these are the rules. I didn't know them. I couldn't write them down at the time, but I had to think about them and say, this is why I do this. Right. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a fun experience. Yeah. And, and that's, it's documented how, and you, you're tested and everything. And we have a pretty good idea that everybody else on the road are, have learned about the same stuff as us. So that's kind of the system. That's why we can trust other uh, people on the road or else uh -huh. any, any type of, oh, there's a car. Well, I have no idea what it's going to do. And yes. I, everybody would just hold still or be driving like crazy or whatever it might my, be. Um, but, yeah. My friends, when, when, when I picked up my friend's wife from India, we drove to the Atlanta airport and driving back she was like, wow, you drive really fast. And I wasn't really going that fast. And we started talking about it. And they said, yeah, in India, now, of course, they use kilometers like you guys do. But um, they basically, it turned out they, they drive like 30 miles an hour tops, which to me is half the normal speed that I drive on the highway, right? That's not even half. It's more like a third because I'm a maniac. But um, and, and, and I was like, why? And they said, because in India, no one actually really abides by those rules that, that they do in the States. Like mm -hmm. cars pull in and out and they said pigs will run out in the middle of the street. So you just can't trust, you know, the people behave, they run stoplights and do all this other stuff. So you can't go that fast. Um, I, I think it's a really good point is by having everyone agree to the systems and using the systems, the, the productivity and advancements that we can do far go beyond what you would have thought in the beginning. It's it, but the problem is everyone has to rely on them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course in, in, in a country or a small place like uh, Denmark or whatever, um, just the, the, everybody expects everybody else. And I've I've have um, um, driving meetings with one of my um, daily management people, and and he can go on and on about how the. Um, the general respect in traffic has declined over the last couple of years, maybe more, but yeah, just he's seeing people running red lights more often. Just, oh, it turned yellow and it actually turned red and they still drove through. Uh, stuff like that, which maybe five, ten years ago wasn't happening as much. and. Um, the police here is maybe preoccupied with other stuff. So there's not that much traffic police. So it, it might be, it might have, has more and more people might have had um, luck without being caught doing stuff like that. And it has slowly meant that people are just doing it more. Cars has become safer. People are rarely actually killed when in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. um, the softer pedestrians and bicyclers and stuff like that are often the ones who actually take the, the real blunt uh, hit, right? But it's it's just, there is something there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting at what he's, he's saying, but yeah, because people are slowly going away from that system that was once so well established it it, be, it 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 really is something that if you don't enforce it in some way yeah you, you'll get back to some place where people won't trust a right. green light or a red light or right. and things um, are breaking down yeah yeah exactly all right well i think we've we've we finally veered off enough where we better say we better <laughs> better wrap it up. fair enough fair enough we were trying to talk about systems and and we, well we yeah. still were but yeah i think yeah. we drifted a bit but um it was that was still a good call all right ma'am i'll talk to you next week yeah Cheers. absolutely bye